Hey everybody, Carla with Carla's Clever Crafts. I have logged on just a couple minutes early to give everybody time to sign on with me. I'm also going to add my inspiration for today's project, um, if I'm able to, in the comment section. I'm making a bee wreath as a birthday present for my very special mother-in-law. And she recently made some purchases at Sam's and she purchased a pillow as well as um, a rug. And so those are what I'm going to be using to uh, coordinate my design today. And it looks like maybe I won't be able to add, I'll add those pictures afterwards because it's not going to give me that option. But we'll go ahead and get started. I have pre-wired the frame. I'm using a 14 inch wire frame from the Dollar Tree. I did leave one section here that's not done so I can show you guys how I did that. These uh, frames have six sections and a section is considered the space in between each crossbar. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to use 18 pipe cleaners. So we have three in each section. I start wiring my sections on the inside two wires. We have one, two, three, four. So I'm working first on these inside two and I'm just lining it up the best I can in the middle of the two crossbars. I'm going to twist my pipe cleaners and tie my knot on that inside wire. It gives you a little extra stability in your final design. And then I just squeeze them down and tighten them. Then we're going to come to the outside two wires. And we're going to go halfway between this pipe cleaner and this crossbar. And we're going to put one right here on the outside two. Again, we're going to tie the knot over the inside bar. So that our mesh lays nicely up on here instead of out here on the edge where it'll wobble around. And then I push the ones on the inside into the inside and the ones on the outside to the outside just to keep them out of my way while I'm working. We're going to come to the other side and do the exact same thing halfway between the crossbar and halfway between the center pipe cleaner. And we're going to put one right there. and tie it again on the inside of the two wires. So you end up with three in each section for a total of 18. Okay, and then we're going today to use um, two different types of mesh. This is a poly jute mesh. Um, it has both a darker natural color and then a lighter um, beige color that runs through it. So we're going to be using that one. And then we're also going to be using yellow. And this is just a standard um, poly mesh yellow. And both, I think the, the poly jute came from Hobby Lobby actually, and the yellow came from Craft Outlet. I have done a bunch of the, we're doing cruffles and I have a bunch of them already made, but I did save a few pieces to show you guys how I do them. So to do my cruffle, I always start by folding over the first edge and then I roll it one and I use my pinkies here to keep these ends down. So I have a nice curl, two, three, and I always do four. I like for my curls to stay kind of tight on the ends. If you don't roll them enough, these will spring open um, and sometimes you'll have your cut edges sticking out. two, three, four. We're just doing the same process on the other end. And then for most of my designs, I turn my curls face down and then I scrunch little sections at a time up the middle and pinch the two sides together to form like a bow. How beautiful wife, I'm home. Hi honey, I hear you. <laughs> Trying to make sure my phone is turned off. Okay, so for this design, we are going to place our mesh in with the finished edge to the inside and the outside. I'm going to start right here on one of the outside pipe cleaners. And I'm going to so these very tight. So I'm pulling these pipe cleaners very tight, give it a couple of twists and just push it down out of my way. I'm going to come to the very next one, which will be on the inside wires here. I'm going to open it up 
And then we're gonna rotate the collar. So now I'm going to do one of the beige or the poly dupe. We're gonna do the same process. I'll show you again. I fold over, use my pinkies to hold these edges down. And then two, three, four, five. Hi, Shannon. Good to see you. I'm going to turn a curl away from us. Do the same thing on the other end. And I roll my curls kind of small. Um, it's, I guess there's really just personal preference, but I like for mine to stay, stay kind of tight while I'm curling them up because they naturally kind of spring open a little bit when you finish with your, what I call a bow. And then I'm just going to place that right in the very next pipe cleaner. Okay, and so we're going to repeat this process all the way around. So I'm just opening the very next pipe cleaner. This one's on the outside two wires. And we need a yellow. So I'm going to pull one of my ready-made cruffles and just stick it right in there. And then this one, I'll show you one more time how I do it. Hold it. Pinky's holding it down. Two, three, four. Turn the curl away. Hold it. Remember to hold down those ends. Two, three, four. Turn it over. And then small little crunches up the middle to give like a ruffled effect. And we're going to just repeat this all the way around with these cruffles that I made in advance until we fill in all 18 of these pipe cleaners. On this design, my mesh is going to all face the same direction. Sometimes if you've watched me before, I do change that up. But on this design, we're going to keep it going the same direction, making sure that we rotate the collars. And this um, wreath is not going to have a sign. The star of it is going to be our bow. So hopefully we'll have a really beautiful bow that we make at the end of this to put right in the middle. My hope in doing this in advance was may, maybe make it go a little faster and not be so repetitious. And then we're going to introduce some green into the design too because the pillow that um, she purchased has like a safe green border. So we're going to tie that in. And then the rug has both of these, the lighter and the darker natural colors. And then I was fortunate enough, they didn't have it this year, but uh, I think it was last year, I bought a V ribbon from Sam's that has the same pattern V that is on the item she bought this year. Hey, Deanna, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. How have you ladies been doing today? Some of my ribbon getting caught on my cruffles. I need to move. Yeah, it's very pretty and very good quality. I love it too. 
this particular one um, is not real thick, but it's it's very good quality. I liked it because it matched both of the colors that are in her rug. So I'm going to tie it all together. She's using this stuff on her patio. Honey, you never believe it. What? I went to get ice, mm -hmm. and our ice machine is making banana split. <laughs> oh, honey, <laughs> are you telling on me for hiding my banana split in the ice maker? <laughs> That'd be nice, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, Deanna, I actually just started doing lives again a few days ago. Um, Christmas hit, and I was just, I, I, there was no way I could, I did not have time to do any. I was barely keeping up with my orders. I was very, very blessed. I'm not complaining. Um, but, and then after the first of the year, it has just taken me forever to get to where I felt like I actually had the time to do them. Easter was pretty busy. Taxes and just trying to learn business stuff, advertising and stuff. I'm glad that you're doing good, Shannon. Okay, we've got one last piece here. I think this is going to turn out very pretty. I sure hope my mother-in-law likes it. And hopefully she'll get to see this video. I don't know how much she knows about watching live videos or logging on to them. Someone might have to show her later so she can see, see me make it. Okay, so this is what we have with our mesh so far. Light and pretty with like a little farmhouse feel to it with the poly jute. Okay, and then I cut more ribbon than I need. That's okay. I changed my mind on how I was going to do the design. So then it changed the number of ribbons I was going to need. This is the sage green that is like the border on her pillow. So I'm going to be using six of these and they're cut to 12 inches and dovetail on each end. Four, five. I'm going to go ahead and lay my extra ones on my chair over here. So we need six of those. And then we're going to need six of this really pretty bright yellow. Six. Okay, and then we're going to need 12. This is the B ribbon that I was referencing that I got at um, Sam's last year. And the B on her pillow is almost the exact same design. So I thought that was really cool. We're going to use 12 of those. Okay, and then we're going to rotate the yellow and the green. One of these will go in every pipe cleaner, and then the yellow, we will rotate every other one. So we're going to be putting two in each pipe cleaner. I actually skipped a step that I need to go back and tell you. We are going to, we have 18 pipe cleaners, but we're only going to use 12 of them for ribbon. So what I'm going to do is cut off the 12 or I'm sorry, the six that are on the inside. So I'm going to go through very carefully, making sure that I'm only cutting the ones that we put on the inside two wires. I'm going to snip those off, leaving about a half of an inch so that I can fold that down in and squeeze it to secure. We've got to be very careful and make sure we don't cut off the ones we need. So these two, we will not cut. This one is on the inside, so we're going to go ahead and snip that one. This is one of my new favorite designs. I'm not even sure that I've done this design on live before. Um, design style. One, two. I did a lot of this kind at of Christmas time. And then one, two on the outside, we're not cutting. So we skip two, and then we should come to one that's on the inside. I have a stray piece of mesh here. I'm going to go ahead and clip while I see it. 
And then we're going to cut this one. Let me push this down there. And again, we have some mesh here that's unruly. The curl kind of came undone there. Okay. One, two. This one is on the inside, and this is our last one. Okay, so again, just to repeat, we cut off the six pipe cleaners that are holding the mesh on the inside wire, only those six. We still have the 12 that we put on the outside. Those are the ones we're going to now put our ribbon in. And when I do um, this design, I do two ribbons in each pipe cleaner. I do the X in front of me and then just scrunch right down the middle to make like an X pattern in my hand. Now I want this yellow ribbon to go on the jute mesh because I do not want to put yellow on yellow. So I'm going to start this right here, put it straight down into my pipe cleaner, pull it very tight, twist it three or four times. Cut it off again, leaving myself about a half an inch so I can push that down and squeeze it. And then I'm going to just adjust my ribbons. I usually make mine kind of fan up and out. And then we're ready to move to the next one. Okay, so we're going to rotate the green. I think I need a bigger craft table. Is the craft table ever big enough? Okay. Again, make an X in front of me, scrunch down the middle, and put it in the very, oops, the very next pipe cleaner. Fluff it up so that they pop up. And we're just going to repeat this process, making sure that we remember to rotate the yellow and the green 12 times. This yellow and um, sage green ribbon also came from Sam's. The yellow I got this year, I think the sage green I got last year. It might have even been fall time. I can't remember for sure. But they are both Sam's ribbons. I like that Sam's has a lot of different shades of the same colors. So green, for example, you can get lime green, emerald green, kelly green, sage green, mint green. Hi, honey. Thanks for watching. Oh, there's my mother-in-law. Janet is my mother-in-law, ladies. I need to look for that 12-inch mesh. I, I've never seen 12 inch. I don't, I've never bought mesh at Michael's though, which is probably why I haven't seen it. But it looks like Janet's on and watching and even knows how to comment, God. So it's, I'm so excited she's going to get to watch us make this. And she loves bows. So I have a feeling that she's going to really like the bow. I think I'll log on and look at Michael's um, afterwards. No, you're right. Never big enough. Okay. 
back to the sage green. And we're just about halfway around it. I have some liquid starch here that I'm going to use on the bow because I want to do some long curly tails. And this is my little secret for how to get curly tails on a bow that actually stay and do not fall out. And I do not dilute my liquid starch. I put it straight in the sprayer bottle and use that for my bows. I also use it on my loops because it stiffens them and makes them hold better as well. And since the bow is kind of the main feature, um, I want it to stand up really well. I'll mention too for anybody that might be watching or watch later. Um, if you don't like to lay two ribbons in at the same time, you do not have to do that to do this design. You can put them in one at a time. Just when you place them, place them in like an X shape. And in the end, the design will look pretty much the same. Need more pieces. Tomorrow I'm going to actually make, I just realized how close Cinco de Mayo is. So tomorrow I'm going to do a fiesta wreath. And it will be the first time I'm going to use one of my wreath kits that I have available to make a design. So I'm pretty excited to do that. My goal is to show a bunch of different designs that you could do using both sign and ribbon bundles. I like these collars together. Okay, this is our last ribbon bundle.
Okay, and here's what we have so far with our ribbons. And then we're, our bow, we're going to do a big bow that's going to go right here and fill in the middle. And we'll lay our wreath over to the side so we can get ready to work on the bow. I had a very long piece of ribbon here already cut, so I'm going to use that first. But I do have another roll of it if we need more. So I'm going to start with dovetailing the end. Okay, and I want really long tails because I'm going to curl these and I'm not sure how well and how, you know, I'm going to cut them extra long. So I make sure that my ribbon tails will, will come down to the bottom of the wreath if I want them to be there. So I'm probably going to do like 12, probably 16. Let me see what I think of 16. Now I'm going to do 18 just to make sure because I want to make sure they're, they're nice and long. Okay, so 18 is what I'm going to do, and if it's too much, I can cut it off, but if it's too short, I can't add to it. So, so I'm going to twist in the middle, pull my tail down, I'm going to make a six inch loop, and twist in the middle again. Another six inch loop on the other side. Twist in the middle. And I think I'm going to do um, a total of three six inch loops on each side to start with. Because I want the bow to be, you know, like I said, it's the main feature. So I want it to be bold, big and bold. Yes, time does go so quickly. It was April before I knew it. My goal was to restart doing lives in like January or February at the latest. And I didn't make it. Okay, so this is not going to do, this is not long enough to do my six total loops. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this down, cut it off even with this one, and then grab my roll of ribbon to do those last two loops. Push that down in there. Of course, when I find something I like, like this ribbon, I, I can't buy just one, so I have plenty of it. Okay, I'm going to dovetail my end again, and I'm going to cut off that folded piece at the beginning. Actually, I shouldn't have dovetailed this. Sorry, guys. Because this is not going to form a tail, it's only going to form loops. I don't want to... Um, dovetail it. I'm actually, let me show you what I'm doing. I'm actually just going to scrunch this probably about an inch to an inch and a half in, and then I'm just going to feed that down on there and then start the process of miles over again. Although this will be tricky because I have to make sure I hold that in place. Okay. And again, we don't need a tail on this piece, so I'm going to do the same thing on this side, and I'm just going to snip that off about an inch to an inch and a half out, so I have enough to grab a hold up there when I wrap it. Okay, and so now I'm going to bring in the yellow.
And I think I'm going to do two yellow. I'm going to borrow my glue stick to hold my ribbon in place. Okay, now here, I also want this to be really long. So I'm going to just go ahead and measure it with the first one that I did. And that's where I'm going to start feeding it through. Again, knowing that I can trim it to get it exactly where I want it. Okay, now on these loops, I'm going to bring them in about an inch from the six inch loops that we just did. So these will be about five inches. And I eyeball it based on my loops underneath. And I'm twisting this in the middle, just like I did the bottom ones. Now this last one, this last piece, I don't need to twist. because I'm going to bring that down to make my tail. not get rid of this cough. Okay, and next we're going to bring in some of the green. Actually, I think I'm going to bring in some more of the B first. Designing as I go. And I am going to put one little tail on this. Well, not a little. It's probably going to be about 14 inches. And make it trimmed at the end. We'll see. Now I'm going to bring this in again, about one inch from the yellow loop that I did. And I'm going to do two on each side. And let's hope when we get to the end of this bow, I love it and we don't have to do it all over again. Yeah, me too, which is part of what makes me do the, doing these lives dangerous. Okay. I'm going to cut this one off pretty much where I did the other one. Again, remember, I may be wasting a lot of ribbon here, something I'm usually against, but at the end, I may end up cutting a lot of this off. Now we're going to bring in some of the sage green. And I'm only going to do one loop of it on each side. stand and I'm going to just measure it with the um, last tail that I did and make it about an inch shorter so that we have like a layering effect at the end with our bow or our tails okay. 
And again, I'm coming in about an inch with each layer. So this one will come in about an inch from these two Bs. I know I said one loop on each side, but I might have changed my mind and do two. Yep, yeah, we're gonna do two because it's a little bit shorter loop. So there's not really much of that pop of color there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two loops. to make sure they're even as much as possible and then I'm just going to pull them down and try to cut them off about the same length and then one last step on our bow I want it to have the center B loop because I want the B to be the top feature which is another reason I wanted to add in that extra loop of the green. And I'm going to cut this about six inches long. One, two, three, four, five, six. I want to stay in there. It's a lot of ribbon. <laughs> no, thank you, honey. Okay. So to do my center loop, I literally just kind of fold it over, line up the edges to make this loop. And then I lay it down in front of me and I just scrunch up the cut side like that. And it's okay if you flatten this in the process or whatever, because we'll fix it in the end. And then I just place that right on top of my stack with making sure that I have enough fed through over here to hold it all together. Okay, and then we will figure out what I do with my extra pipe cleaners for my bow. Probably knock them in the floor. We have one extra here. We'll just grab it. Now I feed this down through the two pegs on my bow maker trying to make sure I got an even amount on each side. Press down in the middle with my thumb. This is a lot of ribbon to hold on to, so I'm gonna use four fingers underneath on this side. Still pressing down hard with my thumb here in the middle. We do not wanna let the stack of ribbon shift or slide. Put these four fingers under this side and use this thumb to also help hold this middle. And gently pull it up out. Say a little prayer as you go. Hold on to it. Find carefully your pipe cleaner and pull it back. And then start to twist it. And then I take my hands off at this point and turn them around. And I use my thumb to press down here in the middle and squeeze it all tight. And then I twist in towards the ribbon. So I'm not twisting the cleaner so that it's twisting back this way. I'm twisting in towards the stack of ribbon so that it is tightening. I hope that makes sense. And I squeeze it extra hard just to make sure that it's tightening really good. Okay, so this is what we have. Looks a little bit of a hoss, but we're done with the bow maker. This is the pipe cleaner. The pieces, we just leave those there for now. We're gonna actually use that to attach to our wire frame. If it's not long enough, we can extend this or you can even use longer pipe cleaners. I think this is gonna be long enough. We'll see when we get there. We need to pull all our beautiful tails down and finish dovetailing the sides that we didn't do or any that we might have missed.
Okay, so I think we've got all of those. So now we're going to spend some time just fluffing the bow. And of course, once we put it on the wreath, we will do that again. Um, but I still always do it before I put it on. I'm going to just get all my tails going down the right way. And I usually start with this center little loop that I make and just spread it out. So then it looks like that, with a little loop. And then these two, I will separate, pulling one up and one down on each side, like that, and keep working the same way um, so that I can get as many of my ribbons to show through in the final bow design as possible. And when you do, when you get to these back layers, try to do it so that you're rotating your ribbons. So like you have the yellow, the B, the yellow, and they rotate, that way they all show through. And then in the back where we did three loops, your middle one will just come straight out and then you'll have one up and one down. And then this liquid starch that we spray on this will help these loops for, stay formed because this is a lot of heavy ribbon stacked on top of each other. So sometimes your back loops, it's already doing it. You can see they'll kind of fall flat. Liquid starch helps to stiffen this and helps it hold its shape a little bit better. Okay, so that is our bow so far. I'm pleased with it. I think it turned out good. We're gonna go ahead and attach it and then I'll show you what I do with the starch. So we're going to just put this right at the top middle, feed it down through the mesh. Make sure I have it kind of centered. I think I do. And then I'm just going to twist the pipe cleaner around itself as many times as I can. I'm not pulling the bow too tight though, because I don't want to sink my bow down inside of all the mesh. I want it to rest on top. So let me just twist this a bunch of times. So I know it's good and secure. It won't, she's going to hang this on her patio door, so I don't want it to blow off. And then I just tuck the end of the pipe cleaners up inside so they don't scratch her door. Okay, and now what we will do here with these ribbon tails, I'm going to stand up to do this part so you guys are going to see probably my fat belly, but that's okay. I really want to show you guys how I do this because I think it makes magnificent bows. Okay, so I'm going to take this liquid starch, not diluted, and I'm going to just simply spray it on every one of these tails. It is okay if you make it wet. It will dry clear and you will not see it. Now, one thing to be careful of is if you spray your surroundings, it leaves like a flaky, sticky mess on your table or whatever you get it on. I'm going to go ahead and do these loops real good. Now this does take some drying time, so I won't be able to show you guys the final result of the curls until after because I have to let it dry. Um, but I will take a picture and show you guys what they turn out like. But I will show you real quick how I curl the tails. I used to do this using a marker and I seen another crafter doing it with a glue stick and the glue stick is more even. So I switched. Now I also do it with a glue stick, but basically anything that you have that is round and is consistent, you could use. And you basically just take your ribbon. I start down here at the bottom 
and you start wrapping. And you can wrap this as tight or as loose as you want your curls to be. And you just wrap it up slowly, trying to keep it on there. And then once you get it wrapped all the way to the top, just pull it out and just leave your curl lay there until it dries. We're going to repeat that with all of these. This is very, very sticky, so be, be warned of that. Oh, thank you, Shannon. Now, after this dries, Maybe I will show you guys how to pull the curls out and then I can just re until after it dries. And remember, you can make this as tight as you want or as loose as you want. probably should have started from the bottom layer instead of the top layer. That one needs a little more curl. And it looks like we're giving our bow a perm. <laughs> Which I guess kind of we are. Okay. So this one I'm going to recurl. And this one. Let's do this one first. I've never timed how long it takes this to dry, but I usually leave it set until the next day um, just to make sure that I can get a good, pretty good hold. Okay, so this is what it looks like with all of our curls. Obviously, we're not going to leave it like that. So I'll show you real quick. When I do pull the curls out, I don't know if I can lean this up against myself to show you. Um, I don't just like pull straight down or untwist them. You just go slowly and kind of untwist gently as you pull down so you get the shape that you want you know and then you can change it or move it around now it's not holding as well as it will after it dries but i just wanted to show you guys how i do that um because i'll have to do that part off camera um so that is what our bow will look like and tomorrow after um, I'm able to untwist all of those. I'll show you guys the final result. My goal is to um, have the, the tails kind of spiral loosely down to the bottom of the wreath. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for helping, hanging out with me. Oh, I was reading Shannon's comment. 
I am glad that they're helping you, Shannon. I'm I'm okay at those. I don't consider myself an expert, but I guess I do have a few tips that are kind of helpful. So I do plan on doing more of those um, also with my wreath kits, showing different ways to do bows with the ribbons and stuff that's included with those. So but thank you guys so much. And I hope my mother-in-law likes it. And I will see you guys again probably tomorrow. All right, bye.